an inland sea on the northeastern corner of North America, a miraculous web of saltwater inlets and waterways, islands, and anchorages. These are the Bredore Lakes of Cape Breton Island, home of osprey and eagle, of lobster and oyster, of the native Micmac and the Gaelic-speaking Scot. The best way to see the Bredore Lakes is from the deck of a little ship, and that's the way I'll show it to you. There's a lot to show. The Bredore Lakes cover nearly 450 square miles. The twists and turns of the shoreline produce about 600 miles of heart-wrenchingly beautiful coves and estuaries, many of them uninhabited and seldom frequented. I've been cruising the Bredore Lakes for more than 20 years, and there's still plenty of nooks and crannies I haven't even begun to explore. If there's a better place to sail, or to canoe, to kayak, to camp, I don't know where it is. The Bredore Lakes are actually an arm of the ocean, almost 850 feet deep in one spot. But because they're almost landlocked, the water temperature gets up to 65 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. With water that warm, there's hardly any fog. There's plenty of wind, but very little tide. There are two passages between the Bredore Lakes and the sea. Well, three, but the Little Bredore is narrow and blocked by a highway bridge. The northern entrance is the Great Bredore, a channel broad enough to accommodate cruise ships, gypsum carriers, freighters, and blue nose too, Nova Scotia's own tall ship. Yachts generally enter from the south, through the century-old canal from the Atlantic at St. Peter's. As the third largest town on the lakes, St. Peter's is a good service center, with a bank, liquor store, inns, restaurants, and so forth. It also has a full-service marina. You'll often encounter the name Dennis on the lakes, River Dennis, Dennis Basin, and so on. Those place names honor Nicolas Denis, the French trader and explorer who established the first business in Cape Breton, in St. Peter's, in 1652. He had a string of trading posts up through the Gulf of St. Lawrence as far as the Gaspé. This little museum is dedicated to his memory. From St. Peter's, the route into the lakes is along St. Peter's Inlet, a river-like waterway with many coves and villages. The west bank of St. Peter's Inlet is populated by Acadians, descendants of Canada's first European settlers, the French sailors and plowmen who came to Nova Scotia with Champlain in the early 17th century. In communities like French Cove and Sampsonville, pretty nearly everyone speaks English, but many of them speak the ancient, lilting dialect of Acadia as well. You may well hear four languages spoken around the lakes, French, English, Mi'kmaq, and Gaelic. There's no real danger in the sinuous passages of St. Peter's Inlet, but there are plenty of opportunities to run aground and embarrass yourself. I know, I've done it. This fine little book, Cruise Cape Breton, has detailed charts and sailing directions for every little harbor on the lakes, and a good many harbors outside the lakes as well. It's an excellent general source of information about Cape Breton, too. Cruise Cape Breton is indispensable when you're feeling your way into lovely little harbors like this one, Cape George Harbor, the last cove in St. Peter's Inlet. It's difficult to reach by land, though not impossible, and it's one of my special favorites. The Big Lake is a 40-mile sheet of water stretched between mountains, speckled with islands and dimpled with coves and harbors. There's a marina here on West Bay at Dundee. Dundee Resort also includes cottages, a 60-room lodge, a restaurant, and a spectacular mountaintop golf course. 
A raw rock face on the mountainside over West Bay marks the location of Marble Mountain. It's now a tiny hamlet, but it was once the site of a quarry which shipped marble out of Clark Cove in schooners throughout the navigational season. My friend Harry Livingston, the late Harry Livingston, who lived here, believed that Marble Mountain was actually Vinland, the Norse colony established by Leif Erikson. Of course, the Newfoundlanders believed that Vinland was in Newfoundland, and the Americans believed it was in Cape Cod. Harry made a pretty good case for Marble Mountain, but then you have to remember his patriotic feelings about Marble Mountain. Five miles down the shore is the Mulligawaitch Reserve, where many Mi'kmaq families spend their summers. The Bredora Lakes are the heartland of a Mi'kmaq nation. That was great fun. There are all kinds of too many spots to name. The early history of the Cruising Club of America was closely associated with the family and friends of Alexander Graham Bell, who was buried on top of that mountain, which he named Benvrea, or Beautiful Mountain. The mansion on the mountainside is Bell's country home, and the whole hillside is still owned by Bell's descendants. There's a museum devoted to Bell and his work in Bedeck on St. Patrick's Channel. Bell and his wife Mabel loved the Bedeck area, and they spent as much time here as they could. Bell developed his tetrahedral kites and hydrofoil boats here. One of his boats held the world water speed record based on a run in Bedeck Bay, and because of Mabel Bell's sponsorship of the Aerial Experiment Association, the first airplane flight in the British Empire also took place here during the winter when the lakes are frozen solid. Bell was an enthusiastic sailor, and Bedeck has been a yachting center ever since his time. This is the yawl Elsie, commissioned by Bell and building Bedeck as a wedding gift for his daughter. Elsie is almost a century old, and she's now being restored. Bedeck's facilities for sailors include a yacht club and two maintenance and repair facilities, Bedeck Marine and the Cape Breton Boatyard. We've always been uh, associated with uh, Henry Fuller there at Cape Breton Boatyard, but uh, I, I know that Charlie Weaver at the, at the uh, uh, other yard does a great job and I think pretty much anything can be taken care of in Bedeck. You can charter anything from paddle boats to cruising sloops in Bedeck. Elsewhere on the Bredore Lakes, you can charter canoes and ocean kayaks as well. Bedeck is the largest non-native community on the lakes, the shire town of Victoria County, as well as being a flourishing summer destination. It's also the home.